Welcome to Restoration with Stacy. We're brought to you by Kind Katsi La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, Special Ice Mineral Water, Yas Washing Powder, and Yas Sanitary Pad. And of course, my favorite breakfast choice, Hooch Corn and Choco Flakes. I'd also want to say a very big thank you to Sir NS Farms and Logistics producers of Obatampa Rice, Trofast Rice, and Victoria Rice. I want to say thank you a lot to Nancy Black for my makeup, to my little sister who made sure that she had to do my hair today and do it right, to my little sister Efia, thank you very much for styling me up today. And of course, Ophelia of ABS Collection, who always makes sure that I look super fabulous in my African print. Thank you all so much. Airwives Association Award. <laughs> So they avoid it, no. And they also may get disciplined. May may get rough, no bad boy. Now, but you must much play, nibi. And I'm much much coachy. I'm a bad man, we're doing it. But you've all done so well. Thank you very much for coming. Give it up for yourself. I am a little excited. A little. I don't know the word, but. It's like my guest is someone I love so much. She is actually one person who gave women a voice in Africa. I wouldn't say Ghana, because her struggle, her commitment, her fight, saw most of us having a voice to speak today, a voice to say, yes, we can do it, a voice to say, yes, what a man can do, I can do, and sometimes we do it better. Don't you agree? Yes. Please let's welcome our guest for today, Her Excellency, Mrs. Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rollins. Welcome to the end of the tunnel. I see a bright light shining through. And it's just for you. There is hope for the time. And I know Air Wipes, you're excited because <laughs> She's one of the founding members of your association. Yes. So you have to pay me today. <laughs> because you would need protocol, protocol, protocol. Today, bring all your issues. Yes. I'll make sure mommy solves them for you. <laughs> mommy, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very and much. We, we're all very excited for us young girls. You gave us a voice because we grew up seeing you as a mother who wanted to make sure her girls would grow to have a voice and can stand for themselves. At what time did you find that passion? Um, I, I believe growing up, uh, my grand aunt and my mother always used to say, when you're a woman, you should let people know you're a woman of worth, a woman of sort, and that you can actually stand on your own and be counted. Um, so it was important to do certain things your confidence, education, something to do so that you are not at the beck and call of somebody else. Mm -hmm. And just carrying yourself with your pride and um, uh, ability, you know, that, that kind of thing is what's pushed me. And my grand aunt and my mother were good examples for me, oh. yeah. And we all hear you're from a very good home, a very wealthy home. That's what Ghanaians have been saying. So you're here and we want to really get to know if it's really true. Because Ghanaians, we talk. So, so now that you're here, because you are from a privileged home. And for most privileged kids, yeah, daddy has it all. So why do I really have to worry myself to try to do something for myself when my parents have it all? What, what, what gave you that drive to still pursue beyond what you had at home? Well, even though we had privileges, and we had a privileged home uh, compared to other um, people, my father always made it clear to us that what is his is not ours. He made it very clear. He said, the best I can give you is your education. So don't start looking at my properties and thinking that is yours. The only thing you have is your head and how you use it. And I will make sure my money helps you to improve on what you have in your head. So at no point did I think I was going to inherit my father. 
and my sisters and brother, I don't think they ever thought they were going to inherit our father or even our grandfather. But we knew that they were giving us something that was um, immeasurable, something that you cannot count. You know what I mean? You cannot quantify it. It is priceless. your self is priceless. Your self-respect, your education, and how you live your life and live it, you know, in a righteous way. 31st December Women's Movement. How did that come about? Well, um, just like Awo here, Awo. <laughs> um, we, I looked at the situation where uh, my husband was saying there should be participatory democracy. Mm -hmm. And yet we could see the men that were the ones pushing ahead. And I said, if we're all going to participate, and the women are still being left out, then it is for democracy for men. Into mm -hmm. mumfa. You know, otherwise we should also be involved. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't easy getting involved with the men. So I said, okay, maybe we should do something uh, on our own, on something for ourselves. women. And then look at the issues that affect women in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. What is it that we want? In our family life, what do we want? With our children, what do we want? Our health, what do we want? You know, so I looked at all those parameters and then started working towards improving on those areas. Mm -hmm. But you cannot improve it without mobilizing the people to understand it. So I did more of a mass uh, mobilization, um, going to the regions, going to the districts, talking to queen mothers and chiefs. First I'll talk to the chiefs, mm -hmm. and then I'll go to the queen mothers, and then they'll call the, the village or the town, mm -hmm. and then I'll speak to them, get a few women to come and speak. It was difficult, yeah. but in the long run it did, it did help. Yeah, it but did. it was from that perspective that I thought, we have a chance in life to change the way that we are looked at as women, I'm going to grab it. It's an opportunity I cannot miss. Mm -hmm. I could sit in my quiet place and drink tea and receive yeah. flowers, you know. <laughs> but um, it was not a time for that. Mm -hmm. Because I think that at that time, the country was going through such difficulty. And um, my husband took over a country that was collapsed, a collapsed yeah. state. So we had to build. And in building, yes, reconstruction, literally. In building, I thought this is the chance to put in laws to protect women, laws to protect our children, mm -hmm. laws to protect widows. All these things, you know, I kind of pushed and then give women empowerment, mm -hmm. economic empowerment, mm -hmm. so they have jobs to do. Or at least tell them that they should work. Because it doesn't really matter how rich your husband is. Mm -hmm. If you're not working, one day he's going to look at you and like, why don't you find something to do? Yeah. Even when there is money. So it's good to have your own. Even if it's something little, you know that I am working on it. Yeah. So I think this is what uh, drove me to push the 31st agenda. And most people are of the opinion that the 31st December Women's Movement was a PNDC organization. How, how different was... 31st December Women's Movement and the government. Because mm. people said it was the government who was funding so, 31st. No, not at all. The government never the government funded. government never funded 31st. Oh. Never. So where was the money coming from? I was traveling and looking for money. Yes. I was getting money from um, NGOs abroad. I was going to embassies in Ghana, go and show them specific projects and say, listen, I, I'm doing this in this village or this town but I need to put up a school to take care of the children who are here so that their mothers can actually do the palm oil mm -hmm. and make some money from that. So if you help me to build the school, they'll be able to put their kids there and then I can make sure the kids get a head start into education. So the so only thing you used was your position? My position. Okay. My posi that I used, trust me. Very well. I, I, I used it because <laughs> I'm not going to pretend here because you know, I, I, if I'm going to sit in a car and I have another car with more women in it, it's for the state. Yeah. You know, I wasn't taking my own car and driving myself yeah. or using my driver to drive alone. Mm -hmm. I, I was using certain privileges. Yes. And so I cannot quantify that. Mm -hmm. But fiscal money, mm -hmm. finances, were never given to me by the PNDC, never. At one point, uh, we wanted to do a big bakery. I'm sure there are old people who remember. And um, 
We wanted one that would be national, one in the barracks, one in other places, you know, so that we can make money from the bread and put it into our children. It's education, yeah. okay. So we were having a meeting and then the executive said, well, we've, we've raised some money, but it's not enough. Why don't you tell your husband to give us a loan? He should tell Chrissy Butri to give us a loan. Mm -hmm. We only need a one point something or two point something million CDs at it that like time. 200 CDs today. Stuff. And so if he can give us that, we can buy two of these equipment and then we can start the project. Without thinking, I jumped into my car and drove to the castle. I thought, oh, it's not so much. You yeah. should be able to give it to me. So, <laughs> oh, military wives, we suffer. <laughs> So I went there, he was having a meeting, his aide -com called him out, I, and then he came and said, yeah, I hear you're looking for me. I said, yes, honey, we just need a little money to start something. Start what? He said, I said, well, we're doing this 31st thing, and we need to get some equipment for the bakery. So if you can just give me a little note or call Pretty Butchie to entertain me in his office. office. <laughs> So that he will give me a little bit of money as a loan, we'll pay it back. So he looked at me as a loan. I said, yeah, we'll pay it back. Then go to the bank. I said, ah, we'll pay it back. Then he said, honey, if you are worth your salt, I've heard you guys organizing, doing all kinds of things, but if you are worth your salt, go to the bank. I said, I should go to the bank. He said, yeah. Yes. <laughs> We did go to the bank. We did. Uh, when, when you were talking, you said they had to call him. I felt, I mean, First Lady, if you go to the castle, you just walk into your husband's office. Well, maybe some can do that. But by etiquette, I think it is wrong to do that. Um, I, I believe that even if your husband is um, a director in a company, you cannot just barge in. Barge it's wrong. In. My upbringing will not tell me I should walk into it. No, 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 no. I will ask them to call him. And you even if he says he's call. busy, I will go back. I won't disturb him. Because I think it's right so to do. When did you meet His Excellency, Dr. Jerry John Rollins? Mm. Um, You're saying, mm, you're curious, eh? <laughs> um, where did we meet? We, we were in primary school together. Yes. Wow. wow. We probably didn't notice each other, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Um, in primary school and then into secondary school, um, we both left the primary school. I went to Ghana International School. He went to another school. Okay. Um, and then I believe, uh, well, I don't know where else he went, but I took my common entrance from um, Ghana International School and went to a school, school, yeah. And he was in my class. He didn't remember me, but I did. Yeah, <laughs> with a light skin. <laughs> oh my God. Actually, it's not true. He always says that he noticed me for the first day. He said. That's what he said. <laughs> so being in the same mm. class with him, yeah. I mean, sometimes it all happens. There is this fine guy in your class and you're checking him out yes. and you don't really know how. How did your friendship start from school? Oh, it was after he had left. It wasn't before. So you guys we used to irritate courage. each other. <laughs> you used to irritate each other? No, not quite. I, oh. I guess he said I irritated him. <laughs> and maybe because you, you had a voice, you vocal, you um, get your way. He always uses a certain example. So let me use that example. Okay. He sa yeah, he says it, but I know it's true, but I didn't think it was such a big deal. But he, he still takes it seriously. Um, you know, it was raining in the school mm -hmm. and uh, we had to move from one place to another. to another. And you have your books, so your books are going to get wet. So you either wait until the rain stops and be late to your class, or you rush through and your books get wet. Get wet. So I was kind of debating, and I thought, no, I will walk. So I'm late, not late. So as I walked out, I suddenly felt the rain was not on me anymore. So I'm wondering. And he came and with he had an umbrella oh, on me. Oh, that's cute. So we kind of walked. And when I got to the other side, I was going. He said, um, haven't you forgotten something? And I turned around and I said, like what? 
I knew exactly what, what he was talking he wants. about. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, like what? And he said, like, thank you. And I said, should you not be privileged to be holding the umbrella on me? Ah! <laughs> oh my God. And he hasn't finished talking about, about it yet. It. Wow. 30 years down the line. And he still talks about it. Yeah. It really got to him then. Yeah, I think He's so. Dead. I think so. Restoration. I delicious challenge. Grandpa versus dad. Today's I delicious challenge is with the Isakes. Yes, I am making a smoothie. As for smoothies, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> and the challenge is on. Put sliced mangoes in a blender. Add ginger. Add the secret ingredient, ideal milk. Then blend. I call my Miliki Kwedu. Start with sliced bananas. Add a special touch. I do milk. Blend, pour, then add granules. Bankariba, mine is akaka mango smoothie. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Both are delicious. Easy to prepare and easy on the pocket. Both recipes are a source of calcium, which helps build and maintain strong bones and teeth. Flush us and we'll send you I delicious recipes to try. Nestle. Good food, good life. La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, uniquely golden, traditionally Ghanaian. Today is my baby's party. I want people to be kind of big surprise. We a special drink. We don't cry. We don't cheer. But you will do what I tell you. I brought you special drink. Cola, ginger, and apple. All for this party. That is what everybody right. is drinking here. Oh, how? That's a special drink, dear. And one I deserve a visit to Sophia. She has a special drink, dear. She has a special drink. And one year more. Come to sing. Special drink. And one year in a year. To many of you, Papa. And the The all new special drink comes in different flavors. Special orange, special ginger, special apple, and special cola. Special drink, naturally tasty. As for my MD, it stays where I place it. Mine really fits well. You know I don't play with my pencil skirts. <laughs> What's important is that it's comfortable. It never shifts. Right. Because I've got a Yas Comfort. Ultra thin, wide wings, and leak guards. Yas sanitary pads provide comfort and absolute protection. We've got Yas Protection. Yas sanitary pads. No shift, no leak. <laughs> I love to eat a tasty breakfast in the morning. Something delicious and healthy. Filled with vitamins. That's my day right makes me so bright. Keeps my body happy. Crunch, 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 complex. Hooch, 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 healthy for everyone.
Yaz washing powder. Fresh clothes. Happy family. Restoration. Beijing. I had never heard of Beijing growing up as a little girl. And all of a sudden, everyone was talking about Beijing conference, Beijing conference. And I saw our first lady at Beijing in her African print yeah. with her scarf, which you're going to teach me how to <laughs> Seriously, I've tried so many times. It never works. So today, you're going to teach me how to do this. And you were out there, not just for Ghana, but for Africa, because most of the first ladies that went to Beijing from Africa, I still don't remember anybody. Not because mm. you are my first lady. I think but that's why. <laughs> not because of that. Mm. But it was the role. Yeah. Every meeting you were there, if somebody had to talk, you made a lot of sense. A lot of sense that would want anybody want to put money in Africa. Mm. When you got that invitation for Beijing conference, was it like a dream come true? So I'm really going to prove myself to these people that African women can, can also be there. Mm. And how was the experience like? Uh, Beijing was um, a, a real test point for Africa because we, we were grappling, we're still grappling, but we were really groping for what level the women should be at. And um, we, in Africa, we're pushing the girl child's education. Because my position was that if the young girl coming up is given her due and educated to the fullest, the full, mm -hmm. where she wants to get to, yeah. and then we direct her in what to do, it will uh, propel the whole country into its development. Yeah. But if we leave the girl child behind, she's going to one day get married, mm -hmm. her household will suffer, her children will suffer, her environment will suffer. In fact, literally, the, the woman encompasses everything. So let's start it with these young girls and push the agenda through them. Mm -hmm. By the time they grow to be your age mm -hmm. or my age, Ghana cannot be the same. That was my, my thing. So we're trying to get the rest of Africa to accept it. Some of them were pushing other agendas, and I said, no. Mm -hmm. So it meant that we had to do a lot of uh, work. And um, I think that in the long run, we were able to get the Girl Child's program into the Beijing document. Because I, I got my power from Beijing. Good. Yeah, that, that's where I got it from. And growing up, I always told my grandfather, I want to be like Mrs. Rollins. She's so strong. She's <laughs> so fearless. She goes anywhere she wants to go. Don't say it too loud. They're going to kill me now. <laughs> She goes wherever she wants to go, and she doesn't care if you're tall, you're short, you're yeah. black, you're white. She's there. Beautiful. This beautiful woman could stand <laughs> in a room with about 200 or thousands of white diplomats, and she's making her point known to you. And she doesn't really care what you think. <laughs> that is what I love about you. Thank and you. I learned, I've, I've been doing my own research, I learned you actually brought the plastic surgery unit mm -hmm. to Kolebu. Yes. And you also brought some cancer centers yes. to Ghana. How did you do that? Well, She was more than a minister of state. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stacy, I just looked at my situa situation and circumstance one day and I said, um, you are in this situation maybe one time in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I've started doing work for women most of the laws that protect women in Ghana today were passed because I pushed it. And because my husband also believed in it. He was single-handedly mm -hmm. looked after by his mother. Yes, so he believes in the capacity and strength of the Ghanaian woman. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, you are there once in a lifetime. Do you want to sit down and relax? Or do you want to do something with it? Mm -hmm. Even as I was doing the 31st work, I thought, OK, let me use this position, because at the time, People had started having breast and problems, breast, breast cancer. cancers. We didn't even have a mammogram. So I actually pushed and uh, mobilized and were able to get money and we bought the first mammogram for Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think the 80s, I can't remember exactly what, did 1985, 84, 85, 86, maybe a lot of people were not born here. 
<laughs> so um, after buying the mammogram, is it called mammogram? Yeah. 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 We realized that um, we needed the treatment mm -hmm. also. And some of the doctors told me, oh, if we can get a treatment center, because everybody who does it and they see it, that the person has any problem, mm -hmm. they send them to Nigeria for the treatment. Especially mm -hmm. if you cannot afford Ford. to go to Europe, then they send you to Nigeria. When they go to Nigeria, it's big wahala. Mm -hmm. It was difficult for them to actually be able to get uh, yeah. the treatment and all that. So from about 1991 or so, I started looking for funding for um, the... Um, the center. For the, the center, yeah. But while doing this, I bumped into somebody who said, well, I'm not into cancer treatment, but I do um, reconstruction of burns and all mm -hmm. that. So I said, okay. So I'm interested in reconstruction of the burns. Oliver Twist. <laughs> So I left the cancer thing and started chasing them for this other one. Mm -hmm. And I got my husband involved in the sense that the, the people came to Ghana and wanted to meet him. So I organized the meeting for them to meet him. Mm -hmm. I think it was Rotary International and other organizations that okay. came together and you know, um, brought the, 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 the center, center for burns and all that, and reconstruction, you know, plastic surgery for mm -hmm. people who've you know, inj they are injured and all that. And so that was the first one. After finishing that one and having it commissioned, then you were back to I your was back to square issues. one. So I was going to look for money to, um, to start some clinics in the districts. Mm -hmm. Because I said, when women are pregnant, I mean, and it's, it's, it's a hassle yeah. when you're not in the big cities. Mm -hmm. Government was build building the big hospitals. But we need the smaller clinics in the villages and so on to take care of the women. So I, um, I, went, I wrote a document to go and look for money for the clinics. But in the course of that, I decided to take um, uh, a document to OPEC. You know OPEC, the Organization of sure. Petroleum uh, ES countries. And uh, my document was to get them to fund 47 hospitals, clinics, actually, in for, Ghana. In Ghana. And because I said that the women were suffering mm -hmm. and they have to travel long, long distances. distances for treatment and all this. I said, okay, you write the document. I said, but I need some um, uh, hospitals on wheels mm -hmm. and dentistry uh, things on wheels. You are really Oliver Twist. So, <laughs> So I managed to, the man said, okay, you get the document, Mrs. Rawlings. When you bring it, then we'll do that. And so the dentistry unit, one for each region, was supposed to go from school to school, checking the children's teeth mm -hmm. and giving advice and so on. And then the big hospitals, that you could have, they could actually uh, operate in it, mm -hmm. do caesarean and all these things on the buses, would have mm -hmm. one per region also. And it would be for the... Um, rural areas. areas of the region, not the centers. Mm -hmm. And when I was able to organize that, then I realized these people can actually do more. So <laughs> I said to them, you know, um, we will need some uh, training for the equipment that I'm trying to get mm -hmm. for our big hospitals yeah. for cancer treatment. If we can get three cancer treatment areas, Kolebu, Konfanochi Hospital and Tamale Hospital. We can become the hub for West Africa. Africa. So, you know, all these guys are looking at me and I'm, I'm going on and on. on, and on. So on. the director said, Mrs. Rawlings, you are so shameless when you are looking for something for your country. <laughs> I said, yeah, actually, I'm quite shameless because I need it because of the women. <laughs> you know, but they, they did give it. So being first lady and a mother, how did you combine it? Um, I think most women can multitask. I keep saying this. Most women, because, you know, you, you, you have breastfeeding a child. The other one is wor worrying you, asking you questions. You can answer, mm -hmm. and you might still be talking to your husband at the same time. That's multitasking. Sometimes you're cooking. Mm -hmm. You have one child on your back. 
The other one is talking to you. You are still cooking. Mm -hmm. You will answer the questions and still, so, you and know, so even women on the phone. Yes, or uh, maybe on yeah. 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 So women can do a number of things at the same time, whereas men need to focus on one thing at a time. That's the difference. The men are not happy. The men in this room are not happy. <laughs> but that's, that's the power of women. And it is. Most people said, oh, we, we never see her pregnant, and all of a sudden, <laughs> she has four kids. Yeah. How did you do it? I'm looking at you. Oh, my God. You know, um, those who I was working with, or those I went to see in the villages, because mm -hmm. I was really always in the villages and so on, okay. um, they, they, they saw me pregnant at some point. It usually doesn't show till like the eighth month, and you see like a bit of, mine. you know, a little Before bit, you know it's out. Bit, yeah. <laughs> By the time it starts showing, you know, I have like two months to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, you see me on my heels all the time, so you don't know. But it's there. <laughs> yeah, I, I had two children before my husband became the PNDC um, yeah, chairman. Um, I had Zanato, I had Yasantua. Yasantua was just, I think, maybe, was it 1980? 82? She was two years old. Uh -huh. Yeah, or just, she was getting to two. Two. Yeah. And so the other two were the revolutionary babies. <laughs> So how, how mm -hmm. close are you with your kids? Because most mm -hmm. of the time mm -hmm. in their growing life, their lives, you were out. Yeah. Either in Beijing, at <laughs> John Hopkins, mm -hmm. at some conference somewhere. That bonding mm -hmm. as a family, do you have it with the kids? Yes, yes I do. Um, I, I think that even when I was um, not at home, I would always be in touch with them. And, you know, it's always, we have to ask mommy. I mean, you want to share a bottle of Coke, you've got to ask mommy. <laughs> so your phone no. is constantly ringing. No, then, you know, they used to call, wherever I've gone to, they will call the, the region, and the region will send a message to me that your children called, so then I have to go and call them. Back. It was not always possible to call in all not the Not like now, not like WhatsApp not like and now. Tango. Yeah. But, um... I, I felt they were grounded because my mother was always there. Restoration. Nestle I Delicious Challenge. Grandpa versus Dad. Today's I Delicious Challenge is with the Isakas. Yes, I am making a smoothie. That's for smoothies, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> and the challenge is on. Put sliced mangoes in a blender. Add ginger. Add the secret ingredient. I tell milk. Then blend. I call my Miliki Kwedu. Start with sliced bananas. Add a special touch. I do milk. Blend, pour, then add granules. Bankariba, my is Akaka mango smoothie. Ooh. Both are delicious. Easy to prepare and easy on the pocket. Both recipes are a source of calcium, which helps build and maintain strong bones and teeth. Flush us and we'll send you I delicious recipes to try. Nestle, good food, good life. La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, uniquely golden, traditionally Ghanaian. Today is my baby's heart. Kind of surprise. We a special drink. I brought you special drink. Cola, ginger, and apple. All for this party. <laughs>
That is what everybody oh, no. is drinking here. Oh, how? That's a special drink there. And no one here is having visitors to here. She boys boy here. She has special drink. No, and no one here anymore. Come to stay. Special drink. And no one here now here no. Many of you, Papa. And the The all new special drink comes in different flavors. Special orange, special ginger, special apple, and special cola. Special drink, naturally tasty. As for my MD, it stays where I place it. Mine really fits well. You know I don't play with my pencil skirts. <laughs> What's important is that it's comfortable. It never shifts. Right. Because I've got a Yas Comfort. Ultra thin, wide wings, and leak guards. Yas sanitary pads provide comfort and absolute protection. We've got Yas protection. Yas sanitary pads. No shift, no leak. I love to eat a tasty breakfast in the morning. Something delicious and healthy. Filled with vitamins. That's my day right makes me so bright. Keeps my body happy. Hooch, crunch, crunch, complex. 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 Crunch it. Hooch, healthy for everyone. When your husband was out fighting for the nation, being a wife, being a mother, what were your fears? Did you ever think you were going to wake up one day to find him gone? Yeah. You had fears? Yes. I wouldn't be normal if I had no fears. Or maybe I wouldn't love him if I didn't have any fears. Um, I, I, I think... Um, on the first day, that's the 15th of May, um, you know, I was on a course at, um, what was it called now? I can't remember. An institute, anyway, to do a management course. And so I woke up getting my child ready to send it to my mother so I could move off to my, um, my course. And then a lady came and knocked on my door. And, and she said, oh, what? Where's your husband? And I said, is there a problem? Because mm -hmm. he hadn't come home. So I thought she knew. Yeah. So I said, is there a problem? And then she said, um, well, let me come in first. So she came in and she said, um, your, your husband is shooting people all over the place. And I said, excuse me. Is that what you came to tell me? Out. I didn't even talk. Just, just. <laughs> and then when she left, I sat back and I'm like, killing people? No. So I took the phone and I called my dad, called my father. And um, they said he had gone to work and I didn't have his office. He, he was in Kumasi doing the quarry. Okay. So I called my mom in the house. And then um, she said, oh. He can't do that. He said, I to me, yes, sir. I said, I'm in the mood. This, some woman came here and mm -hmm. she said, I'm coming. So instead of going to her school, which was on the Independence Avenue, 
She came straight to the house to ask me. I said, I, I really don't know. But I was a bit nervous because mm -hmm. of the things that were happening in those days. Mm -hmm. And he had been picked up by the um, uh, military intelligence a couple mm -hmm. of times. Mm -hmm. Even on the day I had Zanetto, he had to go to the military intelligence, that kind of thing. He wasn't so, there. It, yeah, so it, it's. I was worried. More worried than afraid. Okay? And so. Yes, indeed, as a wife, I was. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> when he was picked up, I mean, the biggest of all the arrests, when you got that news, were you like, no, this is the end? Or you were still optimistic he was going to come back home? No, I... I... I think I didn't know whether it was true or not. When I finally, when they came, the MI people came and they were searching the house. And first of all, they came in to search the house. And I said, you can't come in. And they said, well, we are coming. I said, no, 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 no. Give me your warrant. Mm -hmm. Even then. <laughs> Even in those days. Even then. I'm sure they would be like, Yeah, they, they were like, one. do you know who we are? I said, yes, I do. But bring your warrant. I want to read it. Then I'll let you Then I'll let you in. Oh. So why don't we can get it in, the f in five minutes? That's OK. So go bring it. Close my door. And I locked it. So they went away. I thought, uh -huh, they've gone. So I thought that was the end. <laughs> in five minutes, they were back. <laughs> Ten minutes. Back. And then they came with a warrant. I said, OK. Door open. So at that point, I knew there was a, a bigger Something. problem. OK. And then I knew I must get a lawyer and all that. So yes. It, it was very traumatic. Um, but I knew that he, he, he has convictions, very strong convictions. So if he dies for his conviction, so be it. That's what he felt. You know, He was prepared to die for those con convictions. So I, I had no way of knowing that he would come out at all. No, not at all. The day he came out, I mean... I fainted. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Why you saw your husband come? <sighs> what was the first thing you did when you saw him out? I think you were very nosy. <laughs> Am I? I just want to know, because the speculations are just too much, too well, many. Well, I saw him at the trial. So that was the first mm -hmm. time. Because they wouldn't let me see him. No, they wouldn't. Finally, they allowed the lawyer to go in there to mm -hmm. see him. Uh, lawyer Duma Bosman and um, Chachu, they went to see him oh, to be so able to. So you really had a long time yes. relationship with yeah. the Chikatas. Oh, I knew Chachu when I was in primary school. Wow. Yeah. There's certain people I knew from like that. Oh. Yeah. So, and so. Uh, the first time that I really, really saw him was when, after the first opening of the trial, um, they gave me a chance to talk to him for one minute, they said. One minute? One minute. They said one minute, but I think maybe it was two minutes. <laughs> okay, it seemed so longer than answer. one minute. So uh, in a little room, they, they put him there, and then they allowed me to go in, or they put me in like there. Like we've seen the movies? Him, something like that. Yeah. So that was it. <laughs> you just want to know. The day he became... So we hugged each other. Oh. That, that's yeah, what you want to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's what we want. It was more than a hug. Thank you. Yeah, very tight. It was, yeah, it was more than a hug. Yeah, yeah. that's it. More than a hug. <laughs> <laughs> so when he finally became the, like, the most powerful man in Ghana, that night, that Are we talking day, about me or we're talking about my husband now? I want to know because you've been there. <laughs> You've been there, and <laughs> behind every successful man is a woman. If it wasn't for your drive and your energy, I'm sure he wouldn't have made it this far. So when you saw him become the most powerful man as a wife who had seen all these stressful conditions, mm -hmm. how did you feel? Um, as I said earlier, we, 
um, we were in a situation where Ghana was a collapsed state. So power or no power, you had to learn to rebuild the country. You had to rebuild, retrain um, people, and all these things. So um, I did not see it as the most powerful person in the country, but to see that he became the most responsible person in the country with that uh, position that he had. And um, he exhibited it because he was doing it from passion. He believed that Ghana could do better than we, we had done. Yeah. He felt that we could, um, he could change the country for the better. And if we all got involved, you know. And so uh, for me, I didn't look at the power situation. I saw it as a very serious responsibility, uh, serious work that needed to be achieved. And, um, uh, and advised in any way that mm -hmm. I could. If he asked my advice, even if he didn't ask it, I'll offer it. Offer. If he doesn't take it, it's okay. Did you ever, At least, did you ever even, appoint ministers? Never. Never. I was not, not even, even a member. Not even Um, I think I recommended a couple of you who were not even taken. Oh, they didn't see the if, final list. No. You know, if I, if I had the opportunity at that time to, um, to I don't know if I should say, um, given ministers, mm -hmm. I believe that I would have put 50% of the ministers to be, women. to be women. I would have. I didn't have that opportunity. The, he had his own group that looked for his ministers, and um, I, that was it. That was it, yeah. By but the, if you outside. hear what is outside, mm -hmm. that I it used to like, appoint yeah. and I used to get rid of, yeah. never. The executioner. But, yeah. <laughs> but if you are a minister to my husband, and I go somewhere, somebody has information about something that the person is doing that is so wrong, if I don't tell him, I'll be a bad wife. Yeah. So I'll give him the information as it has been given to mm -hmm. me and say, the person who gave it to me is this person. person. Do you want me to call the person so they tell you themselves? Because it's always better coming from di directly yeah. from the person right. who experienced it, who knows it. And then I'll do that. You know, that I did and did very <laughs> <immaculately>. well. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are the new projects that the movement is working on? Because um, it looks like lately we don't hear a lot of the activities you do. Yeah, and I'm true. sure most women across Ghana are very interested and mm -hmm. want to know how they can be part and help support other women mm -hmm. who are vulnerable. So mm -hmm. I really want to know, what is the movement doing now? Um, are there any <clears throat> projects? Stacey, we're, we're having a lot of difficulties. But we've moved away from uh, mobilize, mobilizing women okay. and giving them a job to do, to looking for financing for the individual to do her work. Okay. That's number one. Uh, when you have great mobilization, you also have a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. Because then you hear of us they're everywhere, yeah. the movement. They are still around. I mean, I, we had like two point something million women. Yes. And so I cannot say they've all died or we swept them all under the carpet. Mm -hmm. We have empowered them. And I think if you want to, uh, if you empower people and they can move away from you, they become independent of you, mm -hmm. it means that you've done your work well. That's number one. That's number two. Number three, we moved away from mobilization, um, mobilizing women to um, rebranding and just targeting just vulnerable. So I talk to a lot of the organizers mm -hmm. and tell them things that they should do at the local level and yeah. so on. But we are not being covered the way, I mean, I was first lady, everybody was, the newspapers, the, yeah. yeah. And today, maybe, they would rather not have me in their newspapers, you know what I mean? So um, we do certain things. Uh, we speak to, even I speak to university mm -hmm. um, ladies, telling them things that they can do mm -hmm. to advance their own careers, mm -hmm. to push their ambitions ahead, but you will never see it on TV. Yeah. The and, TV and people are always there. One of such women mm -hmm. is here, that is Ama mm -hmm. of Anisia. Yeah, she tells me you've really supported her 
and today she makes bags all over oh. the world. And she, she's so proud of you. I'm gonna lift your bag, lift your bag. And she, yeah, she made that. Yeah, they I'm can't see that. from the back, Emma. Yeah. So it's 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 great to be speaking with you, getting very intimate to know what most Ghanaians don't know about you. Are you still going to run for president? Stacey, I thought we said we would not go political. No, this is, I just <laughs> want to, I, you never know, I might want to be your campaign manager. That's it, actually. Yeah. You never know. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You might be the campaign manager. I might even the want The director. More. There you go. Communication manager, something. Because I, I, I don't love politics, but I'm very passionate mm. when I love something mm. or a particular thing. Mm. I give it my all. I always say that it's best to know that I am putting my money here and I'm getting it. It's just like going to a church and yeah. paying your tithe, and the church does not do anything for you. But if I pay my tithe <laughs> and I know my church is building schools, supporting widows, I know my tithe is doing a good job. It's the same thing with politics. If I'm putting my energy there, what do I get back? Oh, so I think I know what I will get from here. <laughs> Stacey, to begin with, I uh, think that we are all political animals here. Yeah. We are all political beings mm -hmm. because whatever you do is political. Yeah. Whatever you want to eat, whatever you want to wear, you're taking a political decision. Mm -hmm. So yes, but you're talking about partisan politics, right? Yes. Um, I'm laying the foundation to see where, how it goes. So I'll keep you posted. Please keep me I'm posted. I'm laying the foundation, ladies. I'm very so interested. So we'll see how it goes. I'm very interested. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been, it's been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But before you go, I have something little for you. You're going to give me a gift? I'm actually going to give you gifts. Gifts? Yes. Wow. Thank you very much. So Bridget, can you help me by kind cat see our sponsors? I am giving you Yas washing powder. I know you wash a lot. And mm -hmm. they have a new bucket, mm -hmm. which is, I've been giving out the 3 kg, but now they have the 5 kg. So if you're watching us at home, you can go and buy your Yaz washing powder, the 5 kilograms, and you can have it for months. Mom, when you see me, baby, bro. Kakra, kakra, because it poor Oh, really? So you can't, yeah. put, you can't put it in a, a, a washing machine? You can put it in a washing machine. You can? Yes, you can. Okay. And it's Ghanaian owned. That's I, what know, I, I know it's Ghanaian. Yeah, mm. That's what I love about Yaz. And I also have, yes, you can bring it, Bridget. I think it's heavy for Bridget. <laughs> I also have Yaz toothpaste. Wow. So hey. I'm sure everybody in the office can have some. Yeah, wow. can have some. And I also have Hooch Choco Flakes. Our Hooch Choco Flakes is crunchy. Mommy, you can just keep one in the car as you drive. You just be eating. Taste it. Ah, really? Very crunchy, it super here? crunchy. It's also owned by Ghanaian. Wow. Then I have Yas Toothbrush. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Yes, Bridget, one at a time. And this is from your daughter, Amma. Oh, she said, since I'm you're coming you here, so she wants you to have this. Wow. Amma, you always make, oh, but I'm still waiting for my own. Come in, come in, come in. This is beautiful. Yes. Ladies, if you want to buy some, a bag, or buy these bags and, and help to keep them, yes, help to keep them in business. What I do is when I'm traveling yes. and I want to give bags, I want to give gifts. I either give the bags or I give cocoa powder and, and what's the chocolate called? What's it called? No, what's the name of the chocolate? Golden tree. I give that so that people can taste it and see we also do something very good here. Yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Thank you for everything. I'm not done, mommy. I know you love our prints. So from GTP, mommy. Wow. Yeah. I'm not I'll done. I'll advertise it for them. <laughs> this is really nice. Since you are a wonderful oh, mother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are a wonderful mother. So we are giving you wow. a batampa rice. Rice. From CNS Farms and Logistics. Oh. 
And it's the coming. last one. But not the least. It's from Wonya Africa. Wow. She gave me this beautiful accessory I'm wearing wow. today. So she wants you to have this so that when you wear your GTP new style, you can what add it. Yeah. Yeah, it's for your eyes only. It's a secret. Yeah, for your eyes Diamonds. only. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you very much, Bobby, for coming. We've really had a wonderful time. Haven't we, ladies? Yes, yeah. we have. We've taken notes and points, right? You say, say, you're better to treat your name. If your husband is rich or poor, you still need a job. You need to have something that is yours, that you can own. It's very important. So please, if you go home, you don't need millions to start. It could be ice chests in Sioka, crack, crack, crack. Profits, now what they to her. Could be anything little. Yeah. Little beginnings always become great endings. Absolutely. So please, let's take this cue for our mother, from our mom. And I know that someday you'll be here on Restoration telling your story and you can give her the credit that you took her advice and it has really helped you. Air wives, where the more more found out. In tin me, you sure say akumupa. Amame. And to all of you watching at home, thank you very much for always making time to stay glued to your TV set to watch us on Restoration. And I know today your perception of our mother has really changed. And always do remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. We'll see you same time next week. I'm Stacy. Welcome to the end of the tunnel. I see a bright light. Shining through And it's just for you Feel free.